There has been a huge controversy about the manner in which Bharat Biotech's Covaxin has been granted approval by the Drug Regulator of India. So far, multiple questions have been raised, charges leveled, but we haven't had an opportunity to talk in detail to the man who is leading Bharat Biotech's pioneering efforts to get the maximum number of Indians vaccinated as quickly as possible. I want to welcome for this special interview, live and exclusive from Hyderabad, a research scientist in molecular biology, founder of Bharat Biotech, the vaccine and biotherapeutics manufacturer that's manufacturing India's first indigenously developed COVID-19 vaccine, Dr. Krishna Ella. Dr. Krishna Ella is an alumni of the University of Wisconsin-Madison and the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, he worked with Medical University of South California before starting his own firm in 1996, which now has more than a thousand employees. Before Covaxin happened, Bharat Biotech developed vaccines for multiple diseases like H1N1, Chikungunya, Zika, the rotavirus, rabies and Japanese encephalitis. But at this moment, he and his team find themselves in the eye of a major nationwide storm. And many people have questions raging through their heads about how safe his vaccine is, about the clinical trials that are being conducted at this moment and the results of these trials. To talk about all of this, I want to welcome Dr. Krishna Ella to in India today. We've been trying, I must tell our viewers, to set up this interview for many weeks now. And it's easier to get you know, anybody internationally or nationally to sit than it has been to convince uh, Dr. Ella to come and join us. But I'm glad that he finally has agreed. So welcome. It's great to have you, sir. My first question, I'll be direct. I'll be as blunt as possible in the hope that you can you know, give your responses and assuage the concerns that people have. Question number one, Dr. Ella, about the efficacy of your vaccine. In the way that the common people of this country see it, Bharat Biotech has been granted preliminary approval for emergency use by the Drug Controller of India without at this moment knowing the results of the phase three trial which is currently underway. The first dose has been largely administered, the second dose administration is currently on. Everyone who's watching will have this question, how can we be sure, Dr. Ella, that the vaccine that you've manufactured will actually do the job for which it is meant? Okay, so the emergency license is very simple. The states and gadget notification, page number 186, people doesn't read all these things, what the law says. The law says, special situation for a new drug where relaxation, abbreviation, omission, or deferment of data may be considered. <clears throat> I want people to read the page number 186 in the Gazette notification. That clearly tells there's a, a plan. But again, I'm not saying that I want to do for regular vaccine. There's a pandemic. When people were developing a vaccine, when is the vaccine is coming? When is the vaccine is coming? Everybody was asking me when is the vaccine is coming. When vaccine, we got emergency license on by using an act of law, then people ask me efficacy. Yes, efficacy again, January 6th, we completed the entire 26,000 people recruitment. People are asking question, oh, there is no uh, recruitment happening. Yes, there was a delay in recruitment because suddenly the, our uh, honorable prime minister announced there will be a vaccine available in the country. Many people said, why should I participate in the clinical trial? Let me wait for the clinical, uh, for the product. There was a delay. But in spite of all that, I'm grateful to all the volunteers. They all participated. 26,000 people have been recruited as, as per the specification on January 6th completed. And second dose, as we speak right now, 11, 000, 10 to 11,000 people have completed second dose of vaccine. I mean, I had to wait for the time. And all this vaccine is coming in less than seven months, eight months. Everybody wants me to show, bring a moon to me. And I don't have a, a, some other big brothers like uh, Pfizer or somebody to help me. It's all Indian efforts, entire thing Indian efforts and ICMR, NIV partnership. We are doing a good science, but nobody appreciates. Tell something negative to the world. You know, oh, you don't have pay efficacy data. Efficacy is going to be coming. But in emergency license, I have a criteria. When you have a pandemic situation, government has got the authority to issue a license based on 
a good animal data, good safety data, good neutralization data in phase one and phase two, all completed. If there is some abbreviation in any of our uh, animal uh, safety or the human phase one and phase two, yes, they would not have given. There's so many subject experts. We have a lot of freedom in this country. Everybody can criticize, but you, you have everybody open. But we need to give a time for me to get, but we are not using anybody guinea pig here, please. Okay, I'm ready to take my vaccine on the first day. If somebody is concerned, I'll put my grandson into the program to take a vaccine, first vaccine. Even I'll put my grandson, I'm ready for that. But what I'm trying to say is, well, efficacy is there. I'm not there, it is, I'm, I'm admitting. It is going ongoing. By March, I will have an efficacy data. By no. then, you know, everybody, you know, crushing my neck, you know, give me efficacy data. It's not something. And also, this drying trial is done by a multinational company, Equia, because we gave it to independent body so that the sanctity of the data, otherwise they'll suspect the Indian company again. Oh, you may be doing something wrong. Everything I'm trying to transparently put it together. Nobody wants to read an emergency license procedure in this country and people blame what I don't have. Yes, I'm not having an efficacy data, but I have extremely good data on challenging studies in monkeys, hamsters, both are published in the peer reviewed. Everybody says, again, peer reviewed journal is not there. As we speak, I have three journals in the public domain already. Two are in the peer review. No, so here's my no, point, Dr. Dr. Ayala. And I, and I want to make this very clear that I don't think anybody for a second is questioning your past track record or the effort you and your core team have done and that this is evidence of Atmanirbhar, a self-reliant Bharat and if this vaccine works out well, it's a matter of great pride, not just for your company, but globally for Indian Pharma. I hear you, you. and I buy you on that. The question Thank is, you. at this moment, Thank sir, you. when you yourself are saying that you don't know how effective that vaccine is, it's safe. So the immunogenicity is established, so it's safe to use, nothing will go wrong. But you yourself don't know how efficacious it is. People will ask, if I queue up and if I get some external, uh, you know, substance going into my body, will it serve the purpose for which it is meant? I am not in the least bit trying to slight you or your scientists or your company for which Indians have great regard. The question is, how can we be certain that this will indeed vaccinate us and give us immunity against the coronavirus? Again, I'm telling you, highlighting my co-vaccin, Rahul. Sir. I, I'm highlighting. You have extremely animal challenging data, I told you. High neutralization antibodies. Generally, we use the Can you hear me, Rahul? I hear you well, sir. Please go on. Okay. Uh, so strong neutralization antibodies. Every viral vaccine, you look at neutralization antibodies and endpoint. Even now, in another three or four months, WHO will announce, okay, you have so much of titer that is equivalent to protection of the efficacy. That is going to come out in three, four months. When it comes out, we will know it. But even our own efficacy data, by March, we'll get the data. But the second dose is over. You have to wait for me. But then people question me, why not have efficacy? Yes, but then at the same time, it's an emergency vaccine. No. If the, when a pandemic, people are dying, nobody was you know, giving an attention to that. But should give some weightage for the emergency license. It's not only India has done it, even WHO has done it for Ebola vaccine. India also, or the globally also done for pandemic flu as a emergency license. When that is was done, nobody questioned that. When Indian company does, it's a question. Sir, you are saying by March, we are already in the middle of January, we will know how efficacious your vaccine is, which essentially means how effective it is for the purpose for which it is meant. Should we then not wait till March? Is it not better from the perspective of people who are watching? Okay, if in March Dr. Ella knows how effective his vaccine is, why don't we start taking Covaxin once we have that data? Why do you think we should start now, Dr. Ella? I mean, you know, uh, look at with the, with the good experience, and uh, we have almost five months of uh, stability of the neutralization studies in the humans. The phase one uh, people, we are following up them. How robust this immune response is there in the body. And we are following it up. And we are also checking micro-neutralization, virus neutralization in a BSL-3 facility. That's a confirmative. 
that antibody that's produced in the phase one and phase two uh, blood sample, we check it in our thing. We have all 800 people sample in a three different time points. We have obtained 1,200 people samples. We have checked in the micro-neutralization assay in our vi virology lab. The, that gives you confidence for us. Yes, it's working. It's a protective, but, but there asked me in efficacy data, 26,000 people, I need to wait for March. That people should give me that uh, liberty but then I'm not using a guinea pigs of this country. I'm not. I'm ready to put my grandson for the clinical for the uh, on a 16th vaccination if you want. Okay, I'm ready for that honestly. Okay, and um, but we have some experience. Please believe us. This vaccine works. It's a pandemic. The country needs an emergency license. Country has given permission. Drug controller has got authority in this country to give an emergency license. You know, yeah, I mean, it's a provision is given. No. So can I just question you about problem. that provision? Uh, because Dr. Gagandeep Kang, who's the vice chair of the board of the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, a global partnership seeking to proactively develop vaccine for epidemics, and a professor of uh, the Christian Medical College in Vellore, has questioned the 2019 clinical trial rules that you just mentioned. She says that clause 2AD of the new rules refers to an investigational new drug. She does not believe that this applies to a vaccine. Remember, a drug is a treatment, a vaccine is a preventive. Only the sick are given drugs, while vaccine are given to the healthy. What would you say to the likes of Dr. Gagandeep Kang, who is a global expert in her own right? I have a lot of respect for Gagandeep, and she's my partner in my rotavirus project. She has seen my rotavirus efficacy trial done in 10,000 infant newborn babies in this country. She was my partner. I have a lot of respect. But I request her to read the emergency license provision. Okay? I'm not saying I, would, I want to bypass the efficacy data. But we, we have so seven months we started production to efficacy data. The efficacy is going on right now. What do you want me to do? And it has to wait. The disease burden has to increase. Unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, I will say, I don't want to say that. When an epidemic is a little bit down in India, so it may take a little longer. If the epidemic is too high, then I would have got the results by probably by February first week. But I need to wait. But I have a lot of respect for her. I'm not denying on her, her uh, questioning on uh, phase three efficacy data. But then she should also read the, the emergency license provision, what is given. And she also knows about Ebola vaccine, is given a provision like that in Africa, that should be aware of it. Then why only blaming me? Sir. And I think that's a critical comments that I want to make it. But otherwise, I have a lot of respect for Gagan. So I must say this again, because no one is blaming you. These questions are being asked because people are concerned of their own safety. Please do not take for a second that this is in some way an effort to pin you down or to blame you. you know, ultimately, you applied for a license, the drug regulator gave you the license, it's not your fault. This cannot be your fault. But people are concerned because naturally at scale, they will be consuming this vaccine and they would like to know why not wait till March when this data is available. Why do you think it's safe to start before that? That's the concern that people have. It's not said in a way to blame you. It's said out of our own concern for our own safety when we line up to get the Covaxin vaccine. Well, um, I want to say one thing. Safety is an important factor. One, we look at it, what type of platform technology we are using. Mm -hmm. We are using an inactivated platform technology, which can go to newborn baby. The platform technology can go to two months baby also. Injectable polio vaccine is given in the birth dose, which is inactivated vaccine. So we have confidence on safety profile. Okay, we have confidence on uh, neutralization studies. We have a confidence on immunogenicity of the product. We have confidence. People are not looking at that. When suddenly says, oh, it is not a public domain. The data is not a public domain. I mean, I have three publications already in the public domain. Two are coming in the peer review, which is coming. But everybody wants me put a hang on my neck. Okay, give me peer review, put a data into tomorrow, everything. Peer review also takes a two months, three months process. Okay, and so can I ask you this hand. question, while we wait for the peer review data to be published in a medical journal, can you Dr. Ella tell us as best as you know at this moment, what is your internal data telling you of all the people who have been trialed so far, 
in the phases that you've conducted and from what you have on your own. This is outside the third party trial. We saw for example with Moderna and Pfizer, they had an efficacy of more than 90%. We saw with the AstraZeneca serum vaccine, 70% was cited. What is your internal best estimate at this moment, Dr. Ella? I can't tell anything, Rahul. It's unscientific if I say something on a guessing like that. It's not right on my part. Being a scientist, I cannot guess all those things. But certainly, we aim above, you know, whatever the regulatory expectations are. Okay? Certainly, we will say that we will be above. But I can't say that it's only efficacy will prove in the data. But I can tell you, the Professor Jacob John is a father of Indian virology of this country. Okay, honestly, anybody who talked about virology in this country is Professor Jacob John from CMC Velo, retired. And he himself wrote two articles, why not in a pandemic, emergency, it's you to be used this vaccine. He clearly mentioned two articles. He wrote even Institute of Animal, I mean, sorry, Institute of Human Ethics issue also an article that it should be used. Emergency, first in the emergency period, Safety is the most important. When safety of the vaccine is good, you should be given. Efficacy can come later. Okay, we don't want to die more people because of safety issues. But safety is the most important. See if the safety is taken care of, efficacy can come later, followed by that. And I think you look at Jacob John, he's the father of Indian virology. And nobody wants to read that also. And you know, throw stones on me. You know, take example, a Bhopal incident, Rahul. Okay, you know, it's a sad part. You know, a Bhopal incident, I just want to tell you, I'm glad, you know, Rahul, I'm able to talk to you. Uh, the reason I'm telling you, I'll tell you a very simple example. In AstraZeneca clinical trial, 23,000 people in a phase three trial, five death cases. Pfizer, 43,000 people in the phase three trial, six death. Moderna, 30,000 people in a phase three trial, 13 death, okay? In our trial, it is not due to vaccine. In a Bhopal incident, Clearly, a person died and he was brought dead to the government hospital, not even the center where we are doing a clinical trial. It was brought to government hospital. He was dead by that. And they figured out the postmortem. It's a clearly poisoning and heart attack. But where press writes it, they say Bhopal incident, they write it, but they don't mention the death is due to the poisoning and heart attack. You see how they cover the simple one sentence and they create a doubt on the vaccine. And which is not fair. I don't deserve that type of uh, attention in this country, where you know I've been well, given a sort of a villain role in this country, or oh, as if I'm doing something wrong. I'm telling honestly, Bhu instance is clearly of some family dispute, maybe some poisoning and uh, heart attack. I, I, I have uh, you know sympathy for that volunteer, okay? But whoever is a volunteer is volunteer for us. But when he died, he is admitted to the Gandhi Hospital, Gandhi, I mean Gandhi ha Medical Government Hospital. In a in a Bupa, not in the private hospital. The all is coming out, but then media blames me. This thing that in a clinical trial, it does happen in clinical trial, but the Bupal incident is not due to the vaccine because in seven days the patient was absolutely fine after vaccination. He was absolutely all right, and now seven 14 days he was all right. After that he died. What? Why he died? We do not know. And clearly, Gandhi uh, Hospital clearly says it's a poisoning and heart attack. No, for that. You want to blame a vaccine? For that also, you want to blame a vaccine? You want to sensationalize the news in this country? I mean, what type of thing? How do we survive as a country? How do we survive as innovation in this country to survive? Everybody, you know, every small negative news thrashing up. 26,000 people were vaccinated. Every media was there in every center to for any adverse reaction. And I'm grateful some of the journalists from even India today and other journalists have taken a vaccine in all India to the medical science. They said, I'm absolutely fine. Okay, but that has not been talked. But one incident. Dr. Krishna Ella, amongst the 26,000 people who've been administered the first dose of Covaxin, what are the kind of side effects that you've picked up so far? We don't know the results of the final trial, but once that first injection was put in, can you tell us what are the typical side effects that are being reported? Major side effect is little pain in the local reaction and maybe a small fever. Only two main things. Remaining nothing much at all, honestly. There's nothing. And we have briefed the entire 26,000 people after vaccination. We gave it to Drug Controller General of India. We gave it to subject expert committees. We briefed all the safety profile. Even after second dose, about 6,000 people we gave the data, 
So what we have seen is first dose maybe about six to seven percent of the people got little bit fever and uh, little pain in the local reaction. But when it comes to second dose, absolutely no adverse reaction. I don't know why, but after second dose, no reactions at all. It's a, one of the safest vaccines, Rahul. Trust me, I'm telling you, it's the safest vaccine. If inactivated vaccine is not a safest, I don't think any technology can be safer than this. No, one of the concerns raised by experts is that unless the final results come out, you don't know how effective the vaccine is and they're citing what happened in Brazil. You would have seen Brazilian health authorities did a press conference saying that the Chinese vaccine only has a 50% efficacy rate down from 80% which was claimed earlier. And they're saying that some of these vaccines also used inactivated viruses like the Bharat Biotech vaccine and therefore the concern is whether this branch or this idea or the notion of using inactivated vac uh, viruses in the case of COVID-19 works as effectively. What would you say to these people? It is a very good question, um, Rahul. I'll tell you, when the same trial was done in uh, Dubai, they got 86% efficacy. When they go to Brazil, they got above 50. But 50 is also licensed because WHO said not less than 50% efficacy, still get the license. But why, why is the same vaccine if another company, maybe Pfizer, if they do the efficacy trial in India, they may not get 94% in India. It may be lower. So we have seen in the rotavirus vaccine, when you do in a clinical trial in US, you get 100% efficacy. When it, the same vaccine, the US vaccine, comes to Bangladesh or India, it's less than 39-40% efficacy. Why is it that? Shows. Sorry, I'm puzzled, but why is that? It's because of the health hygiene reasons. A lot of other reasons. For example, rotavirus, at least I can tell that it may be because of the uh, gastro uh, problems of the individuals. And the vaccine, the way it behaves in uh, other situations are different. But our, our vaccine, co-vaccine, I will tell you, it will pass through the regulatory requirement, number one. Number two, we are doing efficacy trials right in India. And I'm confident about Indian trial. I'm not done in uh, some other country to prove this. But whereas if the other country, other manufacturers, if they do same efficacy, like for example, AstraZeneca, if you do same efficacy trial in India, they may not get 64%, 60%. It may be lower. But that's why they have not done the efficacy trial in India. But you do in a geographically different region, different regions will produce different efficacy data. That's a common in many of the viral vaccines. I can, nobody can challenge me on that point. I can give 100 examples for that vaccine. Every vaccine. But I think we are the only one doing an efficacy trial in India. Give me some trust for that. Nobody has done an efficacy trial in India. We are the only one who have done rotavirus efficacy trial with the cherry kind, which is Gagandeep kind. And we have done, as a, again, phase two, second, number two product. Again, we are done uh, with uh, this one, uh, Covaxin. Efficacy trial going on right now. Okay? So you mentioned so, that in the case of Ebola and the Nipah vaccines, uh, even there, permissions were given without the phase three trial being completed. However, and I want to quote once again Professor Gagandeep Kang, who says that the example of Ebola doesn't apply to COVID-19. And I'm quoting to you what she said. This is sure. because of differences in their mortality rates, as well as the fact that we have other licensed products to take on COVID-19. She asks, and I want you to respond to it. Why would I, sorry, I would ask you, would you want to give a vaccine without efficacy emergency use authorization in these circumstances. Basically, if there are vaccines for which we have the final trial results, why not do the same for Covaxin? That's Gagandeep Kang's question. I am telling you, Covaxin phase three efficacy undergoing on. So please give respect for that, number one. Number two, Ebola is given because mortality was higher. I will not agree that. The reason I will not agree, because even here, it's a people kill, a lot of healthcare workers died in this country. Is it not a mortality of healthcare workers dying? Is it not related to that type of our death? Number one. Number two, the economy is collapsed. We need to get back to the situations to the work. Is it not a, a pandemic? Ebola was also a pandemic. COVID also is a pandemic. Both are COVID. It's all how a scientist looks at it, where the mortality... No, you know, but Gagandeep Kang says that there was no other Ebola vaccine at the time when the first one was given permission. Plus, the mortality rate for Ebola was much higher than with COVID-19. Yes, that's why the Covishield also, Serum Institute is also approved. 
I'm glad our regulators approved two vaccines right now, two given at least permission. So I'm not denying it. Let the others also come in. I use the emergency license procedure. So why is it not to me relevant? When a Ebola can be done in other country, why not here? It all depends how you view the virology, how you view the epidemic. Both are pandemic. Ebola and COVID both are pandemic by definition. There's no change in that. So in an interview that I'd done with you earlier, you had said that the vaccine which is made in India will be so cheap that it will be as cheap as a water bottle, mineral water bottle. Now we're seeing that the vaccine is actually priced at uh, 296 plus GST, even though you're giving some vaccines free, so it comes to 206. So from the initial promise, which was that this would be of the price of a water bottle, here I have it. You said this on the 4th of August, 2020. Now it seems to be this is many water bottles. So what happened? <laughs> now, I, I said in that connotation was, was different. I said, we as Indian manufacturers, sell some of the vaccines lesser than water bottle. For example, hepatitis B vaccine. Today it is sold at 10 rupees a dose in India, which was sold at 800 rupees a dose. Today, four manufacturers in India, they're selling at 10 rupees a dose. Is it not less than a water bottle of hepatitis B? The same hepatitis B sold at $40 in Europe, $40, $45 in US. Is it not cheaper? So I told in the connotation of hepatitis B. For example, Rota, same 65, 65 or $70 in US, Europe also around 80, $85 equivalent. We are selling at $1 dose vaccine, same rotavirus, same quality standards, no difference. Is it not $1, $1 is a water bottle cost? So it's the same. But when the volume goes up, scale up the production in the vaccine, when the price starts dropping. See, two things controls. When a scale up of production increases, number one, number two, competition builds up and we recover the initial investment in the beginning and then drop the price. Everybody drops the price after some time. So please don't relate that water bottle. Water bottle was relevant to the other vaccine. But who knows, the, all these vaccines will drop after some time, after six or eight months. Sir, one of the reasons the drug controller gave you emergency use authorization is because your company made the pitch that this would work better against the N501Y variant, which is commonly called the UK variant. Now, people like me, when they hear this, and you know the science much better, will question that if we don't have final efficacy data against the virus strain, which is most prevalent in India, how is Dr. Krishna Ella so certain that this will work well against the UK variant, where that data itself isn't out? We don't know how well it will do against the new variant. Rahul. Uh, now you are also virologist now. I will, no, I will I, certainly acknowledge you are all virologists. I, I, I make no such claim, but I'm just, because ultimately, sir, and I'll tell you why people have so many questions. Because your sure. vaccine or other Punawala's vaccine goes I, into each one of us. So we are concerned I, as much for you as we are for our own safety, sir. There is nothing, you know, asking a question. And um, I fully understand the people's, uh, you know, concerns. And I'm really honored to answer those questions. And uh, you asked me, uh, what, what, what was the question? Um, so my, uh, my, my question is this. Uh, if we uh, aren't uh, certain uh, about uh, the efficacy against the current strain most prevalent in India, how are you, Dr. Ella, so certain that this will work against the UK strain, which has just about started making an entry in India? Number one, we have evidence. It works for against Indian strain. Please. We use Indian strain to produce a vaccine. And we have a, a almost 1,000 people data with us where it shows the Indian strain is protected in a sense based on the neutralization called micro neutralization. Micro neutralization means we take a vaccinated people, their blood put in along with the virus. The virus should not multiply. That's what we do. It's a conformity. It is not, you know, a speculative, not testing in the lab, you know, looking for S protein and all. That is not, not a reliable method. These are the confirmative methods. So we have clear evidence that it works against the Indian strain, number one. Number two, UK strain, you asked me. I think uh, NIV Pune would maybe answer that question probably in two days' time. And you will have an answer for that. And I'm not supposed to tell that right now, but you will have an answer in two days. Because when you did the press conference, you said it will take a week for the results to come out, that you will have good news against the UK strain. It's been more than a week since your press conference. I, I want, I want the, the NIV to say that. 
you know the other question I, that that people have is about permission being given to you for your vaccine to be used sir in clinical trial mode when you were asked this question during the press conference you said you yourself are uncertain what a clinical trial mode means so people will wonder and you use the word guinea pigs again and again that if they don't have the option of deciding which vaccine they get and if they are going to get co vaccine uh, are they then being used as guinea pigs because what really does a clinical trial mode mean see we have not completed a phase 3 trial as you can see that's why they have given a phase 3 i mean a clinical trial mode it is got two things in a clinical phase, in a ph or phase three efficacy, you have 50% uh, uh, placebo, 50% vaccinated. Okay? You have placebo. You have uh, agree with me on that? Yes. You have 50% people are going to get a placebo there. In in this phase three trial, in this sort of uh, uh, situation right now, in a phase trial, clinical trial mode, you don't have placebo here. You have clinical, you have real vaccine available there. So that's the difference between a phase three efficacy trial and a clinical mode in a pharma people give a consent and they take a vaccine there is no placebo here so that's a good thing good sign no and it's like a phase four type of pharmacovigilance so we'll be happy to have more pharmacovigilance data of safety lot of other data coming out we'll have another two three publications out of that we'll be happy to that You know, you didn't answer that question when I asked you, but I am. You said because it will be unscientific if I answer. But mota mota, and I understand that you don't want to get into the science. Uh, if, if 10 people get your vaccine, how many people will build enough antibodies to ensure that the vaccine, the virus does not then give them a bad bout of coronavirus? Answer it maybe in a non scientific, let us assume that somebody who is in your friends and family circle comes to you and asks this question and I am not looking for a scientific response against which you will be judged later, but I am saying if you were answering this question to your friends and your family saying 100 people got a vaccine, Dr. Ella, how many do you think will build enough antibodies to ward off the virus if it were to strike them? I am telling you the whole purpose of vaccine trial or phase 1, phase 2 is only based on that only. We don't do just safety alone. We draw the blood sample, we check the immunogenicity. Is it can be prevented? The virus can be challenged. And we do monkey challenge studies. We vaccinate the animal and we challenge the virus with the monkey. Why is that we are doing that? That means a fellow a vaccinated person should protect from the infection. We are done in animal, we are done in the phase one, we are done in the phase two, except that in human, we have not done the challenging studies. In efficacy also, what it does, you, you have immune response, you are supposed to have a placebo, have some diseases, in uh, vaccinated people also some with diseases. Okay? And then you say, what is the percentage of people who got uh, disease in placebo, how much people got disease in uh, vaccinated people. That's how we decide on the efficacy percentage. Nothing great. I mean, it's the same continuous process. So we are doing in a phase one, two also the same thing. The only thing is, we are following up the phase one and phase two people. Just we have just been open trial now. I'm telling mm -hmm. honestly, except one person, not even one person got disease so far in both phase one and phase two. Oh, that's important. So you're saying out of the 26,000 people who've received the first dose and about 11,000 who've received the second dose, in this trial group, only one person got uh, COVID-19 after he was administered the vaccine. Two, two people got the COVID. Two people, sorry, not one, two people got the COVID. That's important. So that's a two important assurance. A that's an important assurance. Now tell me, let's and move. And also, sorry. also Rahul, in a phase one and two, we have roughly about uh, 700 or 800 people. Okay? In the way. So about 550, 500 people got a vaccination in that. Some of them are possible in that. We are following up the vaccinated people, their blood sample, even right now we have four or five months data, four months data of their immunogenicity, okay? And we have very stable immune response even after 120 days. That's another good sign, number one. Number two, and we have looked at the 500 people, whether anybody got a COVID infection, not, not even one got it. What about adverse effects against people who have some kind of allergy? Now, one of the things that's happened with the Moderna and uh, with Pfizer's vaccine is that there have been cases 
with people with a particular kind of allergy having an adverse reaction or people if they have allergies or they have some kind of comorbidity, how does your vaccine do in that case, sir? Rahul, now every media people is now virologists in this country right now. I'm glad you asked the question. And I think uh, one nice thing about our vaccine, it can be given to any allergic people also. Nothing will happen. The reason is, in our phase one and phase two and phase three, our inclusion criteria, the exclusion criteria, we have never taken an allergic reaction as an important fact. Okay? So, anybody who has got allergy reaction also has been recruited in this. So, that's a good sign. Our vaccine will work even people who have got some allergic reaction because it is inactivated. So, okay. you, 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 you're also fine. working on a nasal vaccine. Explain where is the nasal vaccine project? I have a child who's uh, five years old. My daughter is um, 18 months old. And we're also very keen that our son at least goes back to school because he's at home and we're worried about him being on the screen. And we want to send him back to school once the school's open and it's safe. Can your vaccine, sir, be given to children? Um, our inactivated vaccine would be the ideal to give it to two years to 12 months. 12 years and above, we have done already trial. So we want to put a pro proposal to Drug Control General and subject expert committees soon, probably in another 10 days, to two years to 12 years. We want to do clinical trial quickly, phase 2B or something like that, a bridging a small trial without 300 or 500, whatever statistics says. We're going to do that because these vaccines can go to children without any problem. No, which, which one? So, your Covaxin can go to children in, in a, or your nasal vaccine can go to children? No, in a inactivated vaccine. Your Covaxin? Inactivated. Yes, Covaxin. Can go to children without any problem. We are going to put a proposal to drug control general of uh, 2 years to 12 years. We want to do a trial quickly. And so that children, uh, and actually, you know, this vaccine will be an ideal vaccine for children. But we don't have data yet. Please. Again, somebody should not get into the TV. Oh, he doesn't have a data. Yes, I don't have data, but I will have a data probably in another four months. You, you uh, said you'll, put your, you'll give your grandson the vaccine. Has he got the vaccine? How old is your grandson? Will you give him the vaccine? I, my, my grandson is six years old. I don't mind putting on 16th vaccination to you. That's, you're saying that in a sign of confidence. If you do, I hope you put out a photo because people will see that and then draw some assurance that you gave it to your grandchild. I will do that, Rahul, number one. Number two, uh, when a rotavirus was action, uh, got licensed, my grandson was the first one. He was just hardly uh, three months baby. And he was the first one. Gagandeep knows that. Gagandeep Kang knows that. He was the first one to take my rotavirus vaccine before getting into the market. Tell me, sir, about that nasal vaccine I asked you about. What is the difference between a nasal vaccine and an intramuscular vaccine in the context of fighting COVID-19? Where are you with your nasal vaccine? How much will it cost? What are your production capacities? How soon may you be able to roll these out? The nasal vaccine, the, I will tell you of uh, all the vaccines, whether Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, or Bharat Biotech co-vaccine, all four vaccines are intramuscular. When you have intramuscular, clearly Pfizer also says, Moderna also says, AstraZeneca also says, clearly it will not prevent the transmission of the virus. That means you may be vaccinated, you may still get infection and you still can transmit the virus to others. That's a major thing. People should be aware of it. So still we need to wear a mask after vaccination also because we're going to spread. But the nasal advantage is it will stop the transmission because you are giving it to the mouth, nose and it, all these are protected. And when you have a, any virus comes in, it gets destroyed. So there is no virus in this area so that you prevent the transmission. I still, as a scientist, I feel nasal, which is gives you mucosal immunity in the body. And second is IgA response and IgG response. Both are produced with the nasal vaccine. Huh. When you have that, it prevents the transmission. And I say that will be the great uh, contribution we can make to the COVID control of stopping the transmission. People are now saying, unless you have herd immunity, you can't. But herd immunity cannot be achieved unless the virus transmission stops. I feel so, how many strong. months before your nasal vaccine will be out? Will it be cheaper or more expensive than the intramuscular vaccine? It will not be expensive compared to like Covaxin or other vaccines. It will be definitely lower, number one. Number two, it will be capacity. We are planning one billion doses capacity, number two. Number three, it may land up as a single dose vaccine. That is another advantage. And also fourth, 
it is only nasal drop i can give multi dose just put one drop one drop here you are done and i have a lot of monkey challenging studies mice hamster three public domain knowledge available if anybody want to look at it they are available to in the public domain so They so your it. your vial is 20 doses in one vial now questions are asked about whether that creates the possibility of more wastage that the, because the moment the vial is opened then you need to administer within a certain number of hours uh four hours or so and otherwise it bacteria may enter and the vaccine can lose its effectiveness does more doses create the possibility of more wastage no i will tell you it's a it's a less wastage because we are giving overage more than 10% okay we are giving more than 10% overage in the vial okay if you drop 0.5 ml it may land up more number of doses if somebody draws 0.55 even still you have extra doses put in in the vial we do extra uh, you know the volume is filled in the vial number 1 and number 2 we also have preservative in this vaccine two phenoxyethanol as a preservative to prevent any infection coming into the vial so after so your have, vial is opened how many hours is it safe how many hours i, I do not know exactly 8 hours after the vaccine is opened it's it you know i saw your press conference and before that when i interviewed you you were a very calm composed scientist and in this press conference you were like this angry young man like the amitabh bachchan of the 70s and i was wondering dr ella ko itna gussa kyu aata hai so i am 65 years old all now i have less patience you know when people you know in a much slinging happens in this country it hurts it hurts because when we do with sincerely 24 hours we are all working i'm telling you, as i'm talking right now i'm coming from the i'm talking from the plant we are working almost 18 hours in a day in the plant we don't get recognition we don't want recognition we are commercial company i agree okay but we do have concern for public health of this country we want to save this society we want to see the economy gets back and people gets a job we also have sincere interest not that people everybody consists of tv channel talking about all sort of virology data is not there bhopal death that death everybody is a pessimistic i don't know why in this country why not be act, show some positive thinking in this country when the economy is in trouble when people are losing a job people are dying healthcare workers are dying why not have some compassion for that nobody we have tendency culturally to throw negative stones why do they have to be pessimistic let's talk something in a constructive in a positive manner okay krishna you don't have this why did you do this we will help you nobody comes forward everybody throws stones and also the all the media are available at home and everybody pulls one scientist puts on the tv and rahul you have not done it but many people pull and put some other question what they want to hear i mean this is not right nobody is talking science many scientists are not done any science at all in this country they have not done a concretely a product development in this country they have not done a clinical research in this country but they still talk and we are the one company who has shown the first efficacy trial in the rotavirus we have done the human challenge studies for typhoid conjugate in oxford with andrew polar in oxford we are proud of that and we have done effectiveness studies in seven eight countries but nobody recognizes that we have just talked to an indian company for vaccine phase 3 efficacy data is not there efficacy is not there data is not there bhopal death everybody negative why not appreciate the company is working something sincerely to do to the good to the society i am not here to destroy the society i am not here to take the money out of the country as i said i have not taken a money from the government to do this project i said it's a moral responsibility company to do something good to the society pay Sir. back to the society Sir. with that feel that's where i get hurt so, it's not that i was amitabh bachchan amitabh bachchan is a great actor i am not an actor so i am a scientist after all human being okay at 65 do i want to take a bashing like this from the people i don't deserve that and i have not taken a single penny of dividend in this company i put back every penny into the r and d and clinical research all clinical research funded by us including equia all the program funded by us but no recognition only bashing only every tv channel every newspaper takes on everybody has got a freedom in this country we have freedom of diarrhea everybody can throw stones but i can't throw stones on a people i have to listen 
So, in the press conference that was done by uh, other Punawala, the chief executive of the Serum Institute, he said there were only three vaccines, the Oxford, AstraZeneca, Serum Institute vaccine, Moderna and Pfizer, which had completed their phase three uh, clinical trials. There was some reference to water and when you did the press conference, you lost it and you were very angry and you were hitting back. Uh, is there a bit of uh, streak of competitive rivalry, a bit of India, Pakistan, India, Australia going between Serum and Bharat Biotech? I, honestly, I'm telling you, my, I have my philosophy, one philosophy, Rahul, please trust me. My company, one of the slides I put for the last 17 years, everybody knows. I put no country, no company is my competitor. Infection disease is my competitor. Okay? I always look at infection disease as my competitor. When people throw stones, I have to react. I'm sorry if I have reacted badly. Okay? I don't mean it. Okay? But certainly, uh, I'm nobody's competitor. He's my friend. Aadhaar is my friend and is my Indian company. I want also to succeed. Okay? We also need to succeed. All of us need to succeed. There's nothing bad here. But I, I, I don't have anything. It's over now. And I think uh, leave the past. I think we need to look at the future. Okay. So, you know, this is not Ajinkya Rahane and Tim Payne, the Australian captain. So, it's not as if uh, Bharat Biotech's uh, captain, Dr. Ella and other Punawala at Serum are like, India, Pakistan or India, Australia out to get each other down. No, we are, are both of us are interested in the public health of this country. Okay. We want country to get back into the normalcy. That's all. We both companies are interested only in that. I think we want country to succeed. Please help us. Put some positive thinking what we are doing. That there need to be projected instead of negative news all the time. Creating a doubt about Indian company, Indian science and all that. I want every children to stay back in this country and do science. Okay? okay. It's not that people, people may bash me, oh, I'm talking philosophy. I'm not talking philosophy. I've done myself. I was a U.S. citizen in U.S. I surrendered my U.S. passport and came to India. Okay? To do something good to society. Nothing else is not to harm the society. Nobody will do it. Any company will not do it. Any scientist, any country, any scientist in this country will never hurt somebody. I'm going to leave it over there. We've had a detailed conversation. I've been waiting for this opportunity to get you to answer some of these questions that have been whirling around my mind as I'm sure they have of people who are watching you at this time. I must tell you and you must go back with this assurance that nobody wants you to fail because you. in your Thank failure you. is our collective failure. The sooner we Thank can you. have vaccines rolled out, whether they're coming from Pune or from Hyderabad, is only a matter of technicality for the person who's scared of the virus and wants to get his child back in school or go back to office himself. So, Dr. Ella, and I know that your entire team of scientists in Hyderabad and elsewhere are watching this broadcast. We wish you all the best. This is Thank not you. about Thank negativity. You. These are genuine concerns that people have because it's substance that ent that's entering their body. I'm glad you've uh, been direct. And you've taken on all these questions, you weren't ducking or weaving or stalling, you answered them as best as you could. What you couldn't answer, you said that you know, you're, li you're limited by science and you can't answer those questions. That's appreciated as well. We hope you succeed because in your success you. lies our collective success and the ability to get life back on track. Dr. Krishna Ella, founder of Bharat Biotech, one of the pioneers of new age biotech technologies in India. Thank you so much. For joining happy us. Lori. Appreciate happy Lori. Thank and you. a very, very happy Lori to you as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now what's that? What is it?